Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. As you can see there's a fly just pushing me around there. <laughs> Don't know how a fly manages to do that, but there we are. So I've upgraded to the latest version which I think is 2.3.0 and we have a new mod in the pack which gives us spiders and a few other mobs and pieces and flies like that one as you saw and little snails which are probably a bit better than the ones from the the flora mod which gives these snails which about one meter big <laughs> anyway today we're going to go and do some uh, immersive engineering to get that thing all connected together and hopefully we'll get some big power out of it today so let's get started right this is the coconut and danny tells me i don't need to put in here a pump so let's get rid of this pump and test it without the pump which will actually be a big saving because, of course, there's a lot pipes are a lot cheaper than pumps, and it says it pumps it out automatically. So I have got some coal with me here, I think. So we can shove that into the coke cupboard and see. Because I, what, what I was giving me is it never showed me anything in here. Of course, it's now going straight out of here, hopefully. And let's just check in here if this is going up. 161 buckets. And how long it takes to get some stuff out of here. So it still says it's empty, and maybe it has to wait till this goes down to zero, which is going to happen now. So what happens, another effect that happens, if you haven't got enough power, or need a 161.5, so yes, it is working. Thank you very much for that tip, Danny. Next one, this machine. I set up another industrial squeezer. I was just saying, if I don't get enough power here, then the lights start to flash. When the light starts to flash, I get extreme lag. <laughs> but in this chest, I've got some rotting flesh. And I've actually got a casting table. What I'm going to do here, I'll move this out of the way because it's portable. I'm using that all the time. I can put the casting table down here like this. It connects into this pipe here. I can put into here some rotting flesh. I'll shove those two in there like that. And those are going to get processed. As you can see here, it uses quite a lot of power. It uses nearly 300 IF. Or it's getting on for that, isn't it? And you can see it's producing leather. So out of here, in this chest here, we're getting, now we're getting leather. And it's also going to produce some uh, blood. And the blood's going to, every time it does one of these, I think it produces a little bit of blood. So I think from two stacks, we will get four congealed bloods coming out of here like this. So when that's finished, we can take it off and then dry it, and then we get this this stuff, congealed blood drops, which are good for protein. <laughs> I think they also give you some health boost as well. Is that a regen thing? Let's take that off then and dry it. So now I'm going to go over to the Nether, and I shall see you when we're not through the. I'm going to go through the Nether to the jungle base. So I'll see you when I'm there. Right here we are. Uh, you see, I've tamed a parrot. <laughs> I don't know what happens if you tame a parrot. Make sure I've got no thing. I think it probably flies with me like a pet. So it'll be squeaking my ear. So this is what I've done. I changed these trees. I think I may have said that already to Pam's Harvest Craft. Pam's Harvest Craft trees will actually work in in the in all seasons, which is actually good. So let's go and trundle off in here and have a look at what's happened if i can get in the doors of course which is always a problem so i built a little passageway down here and that will take us both into the farms and also into uh the factory and you can see here i've set up some conveyor belts so let's just press shift to walk over those so these two farms here are basically uh, they should be empty everything in here should be empty yeah and i've still got plenty of fertilizer left <laughs> I can hear the parrot. It's probably going to drive me insane. <laughs> and those are going to go out in through here. I don't really need this chest in here. That was an intermediate chest. If I want to put something in, I just put it in the chest like like that, for example. Since I was too close, to put those in there. And they'll get sent out down the path. Let's kind of look at that. So I can get through here. Come back up. And then we can go to the other room. I think that's the way down here. It's a bit of a away at the moment. Oops. Oh, hello, parrot. And as you can see here, I've got the, the different bits. So we're getting apples coming in here, and the basic the conveyor belt runs along here, and at the end of this, we've got a hopper. The hopper's got nothing in it, so everything's falling into here. So you can, as you'll see now, it should just get dropped down and drop into the thing. So we're getting plenty of uh, industrial fiber and plenty of hemp seeds. Apples are a bit rarer. 
That looks as though it went into there, didn't it? I didn't know. Just looks as though it went into there. So what we're going to do now is connect up these machines. So let's get on with that. When with immersive engineering, what the best thing to do is to start at the back and work your way forward. Uh, I've also increased the number of um, uh, thermo thermal electric generators here to eight, and which is actually too much for LV. This is an LV wire connector, and their maximum is 250, as you can see here, IF or RF. So I need to probably upgrade these to being uh, medium voltage, but I'll do that in my own time. So here we've got some bits and pieces. What do I need from in here? I need basically these these devices. I'm not sure I need that, but we'll see. We didn't talk about the hop, gra hop granite stuff. One of those, oh, I should have showed you that. So let's get to what I'm going to do is take, take it round in a circle. I'm going to start over this edge here. So I'm going to put it on this block like that. Oh, those are the ones that I want to use yet. That's too low. I want it on the top one. <laughs> How do I get it on the top one? Oh, I like that. Good. Then I can rotate it around with the hammer. So let's just put the uh, the bag down for a second. Shift right click that onto the ground here. We can open it up quite nicely and take the hammer out. So I want these to be rotated in the right direction. So let's right click those. So that's now going the wrong way. That's the right way. As you see, the bottom's coming towards me and the top is going therefore away from me. So I don't need this one. And then we can drag these all the way around back over here like this. And I won't do this on camera, I'll just do a little bit on camera. Now, this one here, you'll see is stopped because it's got this lever here. So what you need to do with that one is then recraft it. <laughs> so let's just take this off. Pick it up. And what you do is you simply put it in the crafting table here and you get a, a conveyor belt that ignores redstone. And I've already got two prepared here like this. So we'll use this one instead. So now it's carrying on working as, as, it, as it should do. And I'm just going to go around here and I shall come back in a second when I've put them all down. Right, now they're all down as you can see. There's a couple I need to change of course and those are the ones where they go into these machines. And here you see there's two inputs. Um, on this, these are the blue side. What I'll do here is I'll just replace one of these and put in a hopper. Um, hopping, what's it called? A dropping conveyor belt. So let's just replace this one here. And I'm gonna drop these into here, but obviously I've got to be, it's gonna be a bit smarter than that. So what I need to do is I'm going to use um, item routers, and I don't have to set up any rules for the item router, I'll just put it down it's going to only allow things to go out that can actually go in let's put that down there like that no you don't have to do it any more than that that's fine and i'm going to do the other one which is actually over this face over here now that probably would have been a good a good machine to have reflected when i built it anyway it doesn't matter that much does it so we'll do that on the same same face over this side uh, exactly opposite when I built those big machines, I didn't know that you could press the shift middle button to reflect a machine. So there we are. That was another another thing I saw in actually Danny's video in that case. So let's have a look. So that should now, now work. <clears throat> now, in fact, as it happens, these machines are already full. And it's also got some ethanol in there. And the other one's also got some uh, juice. Yeah, it's got some plant oil from seeds. So I'm going to turn these, this machine on anyway because it hasn't got that much plant oil on. And hopefully, you'll see in here, it's using... Uh, it's not too bad, this one. Oh, this industrial squeeze is not using that much. I think it depends on the recipe. But as you can see, the items are going down in here slowly. So let's get... I've got to find a way to get this out of here now. One, I keep getting stuck on that. <laughs> so what I need to do is to get the items out of here. So what I'm going to do for the time being is to remove these two conveyor belts. Uh, and let's let things flow across and then think of a way of getting them out. There is a way I can just drop them, I could put them some hoppers up here and move them up. So, but for the time being, I'm just going to break these out. Just these two. Like that, and then just put some more conveyor belts. Oops. I've got a mob somewhere. Where is that one? <laughs> a strange mob, and that's going the wrong way. 
So I've got to do that from the other direction, of course. Unless, of course, that was the... I've got some stone here, which I shall... No, I'll use this scaffolding here. So I have to break these two out. I don't know where that mob is, but well, I have got some mob protection around the base now, so I'll put a few lights around. Can I get to that one? No, I can't. But I can here. Like that. So we can simply shift click away the stuff that I've picked up, been picking up. Like that. I didn't mean to do that one, of course. Let's pick up that one. So hopefully that's going to let everything go through. Let's have a look now. It's just a bit awkward to get into a place where you can actually see it. <laughs> but that should do. Yeah, that's going nicely. So the hemp fire is going to drop still into that chest. And the other stuff should carry on going round now. As you see, it's winter time and apples are actually being produced. So it behaves a bit strangely just in in that place there where those two join up. I'm not sure if I have to change that a little bit, but it does work and it does carry on. I guess that's what those two pieces of stone for are for. There's some holes in here which I need to just close up. But if I can, that is. So let's just put down that scaffolding again. So the next thing we're gonna do is, is connect these things up with tubes. What's on the other side of that is the other passageway, like that. Good. That's right. So all we have to do that I've, because I placed everything where I placed everything. We didn't. We don't have to do very much because everything will just simply get pushed out. And in here, I should have some plenty of pipes. I have good. So. Oh, hello, there you are. Let's just make him sit down, because otherwise it, it's probably all right here, but it's right at clicking, but I've got to be careful I don't use my... Oh, it's decided to fly away. <laughs> right, so what we want to do is just connect these up with pipes, and all I have to do is, remember, if I remember correctly, is just to put them down. There they are. So that just goes like this like that and that should then start to get into its input I hope I think it should get into its input let's have a look at this maybe it needs to be turned on does it need to be turned on yes it certainly does look and you can see now we're getting ethanol in here I wonder if that's the parrot making that noise or if it's actually to the mob. <laughs> and we'll do the same. This one's already turned on. You see, I was just picking up an item there as it flew past. Um, so let's have a look at this one. So this is full of ethanol and uh, seeds are empty, but it's all going down a bit. So we've got a full plant oil. So I just need to connect this up now. Shift click it. I have to shift click it on that one or put it on the ground, one or the other. So this refinery is now going to get both plant oil and oh, it's already generating biodiesel because it's not turned off so let's just shift click this again I'll pick up the bag you got these bags I hadn't realized they're as good as they are but they are pretty good so now we've got the output of this is going to go into the input of here And as you heard, the diesel engine started up almost immediately. Now it's got a redstone, so I need a, I need a, I'm getting very distracted by noises and I don't know if it's a mob or it's a parrot. <laughs> so I think I need a lever on here to get this to run. So we've got a lever here. So let's put this lever from down for the time being. No, it's got no output in it, but it should have fuel in this one. Oh, have we connected it up even? Yes, that's connected up. How do we see if it's got fuel in it? I'm sure it has. So let's get, let's connect these wires together next. So we need some um, high voltage cables, and I think I've got those. I've got 17 in here. That should be enough. What I need to do also is to put some uh, capacitors as well, some high voltage capacitors on this stuff. 
Now I've got a feeling with high voltage cables I have to um, I think they're probably dangerous so I have to do something smart with them. So let's just connect these three in like this. So I don't want to touch them in other words I'll probably get shocked. So I need to connect these up so I need three connectors for those and I've got some of those as well in the box over here. In fact I can put away the uh, these tanks and things when I'm actually not using that one as you see I'm picking up industrial hemp as I'm walking past so maybe I have to do some scaffolding on that but sca steel scaffolding in this quantity is fairly expensive so here are the high voltage connectors they're fairly straightforward to make let's have a look at the recipe for those because I haven't shown you that it's basically aluminium we've got loads of aluminium because it's one of the things we don't use very much in terracotta exactly the same as the other ones instead of having copper for low voltage or iron for medium voltage we've got aluminium and the wires they're slightly different the recipe for these are uh, aluminium wire so one ingot of aluminium wire plus a steel wire plus a, plus a stick of any description will give us four of these and we can also do some trading of that as well so we Two emeralds will give us a high voltage uh, from an electrician. It's a bit expensive, but I don't need to do that. So let's go and put these down here. I've got one on already, and I think this is probably where it gets connected to. And I don't think I need to use more than this, because this machine is only going to take 512. And the generator is going to generate 4096. So let's just connect that to there. Oops. Oops, it killed the parrot too. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yes, so the parrot is now dead. <laughs> we have a disease parrot. Okay, so th they are very dangerous. So I have to be very careful around these machines. Hopefully, <laughs> I, I, I can walk on the machines safely enough. But And it's a low connector too, so that's uh, pretty nasty. Look at how much damage I took. Okay. So my, I'm not very good with pets. I've lost a cat and now I've lost a parrot. So here we are. So that's it. We've got we've got stuff. Now what we have to do now is we come along here and we can put into this. I've got two feathers from the parrot. Um, some graphite. And I've got those with me as well. We need these graphite rods. And I haven't shown you how we make the graphite rods yet. These graphite electrodes. We need three of these. So let's right click this on here and then we can put those in here. I wonder if I can shift click them into place. Yeah, I can look and they shift click into the place into that. So those are the right place. Now the recipe for this, you have to make it, all right, because it's four ingots worth. Uh, no, it's actually eight ingots worth, but I didn't do it this way. I used it in the engineer's workbench. So you need four hop, hop granite will make one electrode. Hop granite ingots make four electrodes, I think. Yeah, that's right, that's 32. Basically, it's 32 pieces of coal. The recipe for hop, hop granite is smelting uh, some hot graphite dust. And the graphite dust is made by um, squeezing eight coke dust. The coke dust is made from the industrial squeezer. My goodness gracious me. So we got the crusher, I mean, sorry. So we crush, so we crush eight of these uh, Cold coke, and you'll get one ingot's worth of or dust. So it's quite a process to make that. That's why I made the other machine. So what we need to do now is to test this. And you know what? I haven't got anything to test it with. Let's just see what can we actually smelt. It would be good to have some coal with me, wouldn't it? Now I got any coal with me? Yes, I have. Good. And I've got some iron with me. Great. So we can actually test. I don't know whether I need coal dust. If I need coal dust, I'm possibly a I have to create a crusher or go back to the other base and do it. So let's go and do that. I bet it's coal dust we need anyway. So let's just put in a few of these, like two. And I'm sure we're going to... I'll try flicking the coal. In. No, the coal doesn't work. OK, I shall be back in a few minutes when I've got the coal dust that we need for this. See you in a second. So what I need is cold coke dust. So I can put that one in, so two of those, and that should do that. Let's have a look. 
And sure enough, they take a little bit of damage. So it's actually a lot more expensive in cold coke to actually make steel using this machine. <laughs> but we can also make some other stuff. So we can make some nickel ingots with some copper dust. Will give us some. Um, um, I think that's going in the right place. Not 100% sure, to be honest with you. The copper grit should also give us. Um, oh, yeah, cupernicum, as you can see. Now, why is that not making another iron ingot? It's half done. That's strange. Do I have to take this out straight away? Probably have to take the slag out straight away. No big deal. Well, maybe it is a big deal, actually. What happened here? I've lost two connectors. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit careful there because obviously if I get anywhere near those things, they're going to give me a bash. But we do have a solution for that, I think. So let's do that first of all. I, I say think because I've never tried this. But I did make some aluminium plates in here. So all we can do is make a, some uh, immersive engineering uh, Faraday helmet. And of course, they've got leggings. And of course, we've got boots. I've got a feeling if I do this, then it's uh, protection against high voltage. Um, but as I said, I'm not until I've actually tried it. I'm not 100% sure. Of course, that's going to be difficult to put on because not enough space. That's where the helmet gone to. There we go. Let's press F again. Put that back again. I was. Just getting a bit of health back by going to the bees and uh, grinding a few zombie pigmen on my way back. So I picked up a few bits and pieces from zombie pigmen. So now wearing this, I should be all right. I may, uh, let's just try touching it. Yes, I don't get, I don't get zapped anymore. So I can pick up these. So I'm not sure why they actually got thrown off here. That's a bit of a puzzle. Let's just reconnect this one up. Like that. I'm wondering if it's generating pollution. Oh yes, lots of pollution from here. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the diesel engine, of course. As we suspected it would do. So now we see where it's coming from. I've got to, <laughs> it's what's happening. So let's just turn this off and make sure that we can deal with this, which I'm going to deal with between episodes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe this stuff out of here and I'm going to take it to the farm. So I'm going to run a whole load of vents along here and then through this passageway here, I think. Uh, that'll be challenging because um, I'm going to start at the other end and just stand on it and let, put the vents down there. And hopefully we can take all of this pollution out of here straight away without it going, knocking off the cables. So there we are then. I, yeah, so it does say it's bad for the environment. So it didn't stop because of slag filling up here. It stopped because of <laughs> power. So there we are, I think. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, I've learned something new. <laughs> not to bring parrots near high-voltage machines. Not to stand near high-voltage machines without protection. And also to make sure you've got a nice way of getting rid of that pollution from the bad for the environment diesel engine so until next time i wish you all the best we will be doing some more i'll prepare events um between times so until then bye for now <laughs>